Hello, um, thank you so much for joining us um, for this talk about the work of Leila Alawi. Um, I'm Echo Eshen, I'm a writer and a curator, and actually just uh, produced a book called Africa State of Mind, which is a survey show of contemporary African photography, which featured the work of Leila Alawi. Uh, joined to talk about her work this afternoon uh, with Hassan Hajjaj, a uh, fantastic uh, photographer and portraitist uh, whose work is shown and collected all around the world. Hassan, live yes. from Morocco. Yes, sorry, I'm listening, So because I'm outside. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Um, I'm good. How are you? Let me to introduce myself. My name's Hassan yeah. Hajjaj. Um, I'm a Moroccan, London-based photographer, artist. Um, I also known Echo for a while, um, and it's, this is a big honor to be able to sort of speak about Leila. Um, you know, I had a personal friendship with her. Well, let's, uh, so I don't before, before we go into that, that after. Yeah. Let, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk for a moment. So look, we're talking on the occasion of the first major UK retrospective of the work of Leila Lawi, uh, Rite of, Pas Rite of Passage, which opens, which, which is open now, Actually, no, sorry, apologies. Opens this Sunday to the public at Somerset House uh, from 11th of October to the 28th of February, 21. Uh, so it's the first major retrospective of, of Leila Lowe's work. Um, so she's a French Moroccan artist and activist um, whose work here is presented in partnership with 154 Art Fair and is part of the Charles Russell, Russell Speechley's Terrace Rooms series. Um, just to think about, uh, her work for a moment. Um, so Leila Alawi, French Moroccan photographer, um, in 2016, uh, she was working on a women's rights campaign with Amnesty International in Burkina Faso, when she was unfortunately caught in gunfire, gunfire during a terrorist attack and uh, died soon after. So Leila Alawi uh, died at the uh, much too young age of, of 33. Uh, she was a photographer of great sensitivity, empathy, and empathy in this exhibition at Somerset House includes three of her defining series of work, uh, the Moroccans, No Passara and Latrine, as well as her final unfinished video work, Devil's Island, uh, which explores the lives of a 1960s generation of, of dispossessed immigrant workers in France. Um, like I said, I think uh, her work, I think is extraordinary in its acuity of gaze, really, and, and its ability to form a connection of empathy with her subjects and to detail the lived experience of people in Morocco and North Africa. But Hassan, just to, yeah. you knew her personally. Yes, uh, I met Leila um, maybe, well, maybe eight, 10 years ago. I met her, she was doing her first show um, of mainly Moroccan artists and she had an ex uh, exhibition. And over the years, we got to know each other. Um, and I was, you know, when I met her, I saw this incredible photographer searching what she wanted to do. Uh, as I said, the first show was mainly the artist, which was a great show. She kind of documented all the Moroccan artists, uh, very important artists, designers from young and old, male, female. Um, so over the years, we sort of been in similar shows. Uh, we had, um, you know, we um, know her mum, her dad, her brother. Um, for me, Leila was, sad enough, the point of her death, she, I think, just found exactly what she meant to do as a photographer, because she was really about telling the story about people. And I saw a struggle with this amazing photographer from the beginning, doing searching for herself. You know, every artist or photographer trying to find the... Um, you know, what they're trying to express sometimes is very difficult. Um, you know, I had a situation with her where, you know, I was supposed to shoot her for my body of work. Uh, just before she died, she was going to move to London. I found there was space just off Arnold Circus around the corner of my shop with a friend to live. She was going to come to, I think, to study or do a project there for a year. Um, we, you know, we sort of both big fans of our works. Us, we'd done a swap, you know, got a picture from her, she took a picture from me. Um, so it was, you know, I mean, I still, you know, even talking about it, I still can't find it very difficult to imagine that she's not around. Um, for the short time she had, I mean, she really kind of got this very strong body of work that so actually tells her journey as a person as well, to see a person, um, you know, she's coming from a decent background. Um, as I say, 
a great, technically a great photographer. And it's just sad that that point of time where she really was trying to uh, tell stories of people globally um, and to have this situation happen to her. So, I mean, for me, it was like a really, really hard uh, moment uh, when she passed away. Uh, as I say, you know, because I know her family and stuff, it was a difficult few years and I just love every, the, you know, how at least her work is getting protected and getting shown. So I'm very proud to see her doing the, having a show at 154 um, to not to be forgotten about. And this is very important for me. Well, yeah, I mean, we can see some, we can, as we're talking, we'll be able to see some of the works as they're being presented, as they are presented at, at Somerset House. Um, I mean, you know, she, French Moroccan, I think um, uh, she was, you know, aware of the fact that, that she lived in Morocco, but she has a kind of European privilege to some extent. Can you, well, actually, if, if, even before we get into that, can you just describe something of the context? What does it mean? to be a photographer in Morocco? Like, does Morocco have a strong photography culture? Uh, how have you negotiated that? How did she negotiate that? Well, I think uh, Leila was of a generation of photographers that um, really opened the doors for Moroccan photography. Uh, importantly, it was also, she's a woman. And I think this is great to see a woman's point of view, uh, you know, a Moroccan photographer. So she really opened lots of doors uh, and broke lots of barriers. Um, you know, since then, the photography in Morocco has been, it's incredible. I mean, the last five years, it's, I just can't believe the amount of photographers, this new generation. And for me, she's definitely part of that journey. You know, she's a door breaker. Um, and I think also her body of work has been sort of, you know, uh, quite important, not just sort of um, doing anything just for the sake of it to be a, an artist. Um, so for me, she's really somebody who's, um, you know, opened up the doors. And let's say because of her short term time in this uh, earth, uh, it's sort of, um, you know, it's sort of kind of sadly to not see what she could have done even more uh, going forwards. Uh, but she's really is, um, you know, became an iconic person in Morocco, an important photographer and sort of getting recognized globally as well. Um, so for me, this is something very important, I think, what she's did. I mean, we're looking right now, we're looking in the first room. So the Somerset House show is put into three different rooms. The first room that we go into opens up with, you know, the work I know her best for, which is the Moroccans, which is just, a, just uh, for me, it's just a fantastic series of portraits. It's based on, you know, Robert Frank, great American photographer. He does this mid-century project called the Americans, where he travels all the way across America, trying to take the texture of the country and the people of America. And she tries to do the same thing with the Moroccans. She travels across the country. She has a mobile studio that she sets up in town squares and markets. And she just invites people to come and stand in front of the camera. I mean, for you, you know, what's, what, what's your take on, 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 on the project? Well, this, this series you're showing right now is really a great series. It's all... Um... All, the, all these images are taken of the people from Jamaat Nair Square. Uh, you have to remember Jamaat Nair Square in Marrakesh is the heart of Marrakesh. It's where everything happens, entertainment, food. You have, you know, the snake charmers, the monkey, uh, you know, people who have monkeys. You have henna girls, uh, boxing. So it's a very important uh, part of Marrakesh and globally. And I think this body of work, you know, I was, I'm really lucky that I have one of these, you know, pictures wow. that I did a swap with her for, from this series. Mm. And she really captured the people beautifully. And also, I think it's so nice to see a Moroccan photographer presenting Moroccan subjects in this kind of, you know, beautiful, um, you mm. know, uh, way of taking um, of pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really, again, you know, though they're beautiful pictures, it's also documenting a period of time of Jamaat Nair Square, because, you know, in these these pictures in 20, 30 years time, you know, some of these people might, might not be around, then it's going to become even more important to have, you know, what you could see, mm. what happens in the square. Um, so she kind of captured almost every style of of the square, you know, the musician, the, you know, the, the, the you know, the sellers. 
so this is a beautiful for me this is one of the be beautiful series as well that for me i can um i suppose i'm dead and i i'm dead identify with um so this is um, something that you know for me i think um opened lots of doors in morocco for as well to to kind of capture these images i mean as, as well as taking photos in the square she also did do this project different parts of the country she traveled around for it like can you can you talk because i'm really interested in this can you talk photographically about this as well because one thing that i'm always struck by when i look at this work is that although she's photographing in different locations she has a black backdrop so that we have no real sense of where she is apart from i, I mean Morocco. for me you know it's 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 it, so you you kind of sorry uh, no, Karen, Karen. I was going to say, uh, for me, you could see it as a photographer by her using this backdrop. It's, it's, it shows her that the interest is on about the, the person in the picture. Yeah. So it really, you know, it sort of makes the, the, the people pop in the picture to kind of see. So, so for me, I think she found a way, uh, obviously, with lighting and composition, to mm -hmm. really highlight the the personality of, of the of the subjects, mm. um, and it's it's really beautiful. Like you said, it's very classic, and it's when you look at the images, it's direct. Her lighting is amazing, uh, and you can really see the you know the the spirit of the people in the pictures. How do you think that knowing her, knowing her abilities as a photographer, how does she get that level of connection <sighs> with her subjects? Because in each of these. These people are staring out into the lens, out of the frame, and it seems well, like she's formed a connection with them. Well, if, you know, if you got to meet Le uh, Leila, uh, Lyra Hanna, God bless her, uh, you'll understand why these people are, are like this in her images. Leila was a person that was uh, easy to get on with, approachable, um, you know, so she didn't have any hang ups. And I think she was a great communicator with people to really get the best out of them. And mm -hmm. you could see it in the work. And even if you see the other work, the early part of the work of the, uh, the Moroccan artists, you could see really uh, with, with the artists, you could see she had even a, a longer relationship. I think these images, it was like obviously working at who to shoot and it was the moment. But mm -hmm. within that, she still got a strong images. And, and uh, like you said, a very strong um, uh, sort of personality coming out of every person. But that's really to do with her character. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the answer is to do with uh, Leila's uh, spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, so she's born in Paris to French mother and to a Moroccan father. And in part, is, is there something that says here that she was also looking for a way to make sense of her place in society in Morocco, um, it, was that you? You described her as, as going on a journey as an artist. Was part of that journey a journey of identity, a search for belonging? Yes, that's a good question. Definitely, I think uh, you could see somebody who's you know come back to Morocco, grown up in Morocco, you know, in and out of the country, who's come back, and I suppose. If you look at the first body of work about the artist, her mm -hmm. discovering the art scene in, in Morocco and getting to know these characters and then approaching them to take pictures. So that would be the first, um, let's say, uh, connection because she's an artist. That was an easy uh, thought to kind of start with this. And it probably happened naturally. With these images, you could see somebody who's Moroccan, but also probably can be an outsider because, you know, they grew up partly in France or, you know, sort of having that uh, dual pers um, per uh, uh, country personalities in a sense, where she's really looking at the identity of, of Morocco, the people of Morocco, the way they dress, the kind of, you know, the uh, variation of, of types of people as well. So this body of work, I think is the next step of her uh, after doing uh, the body of work on the artist. This is her just looking at Morocco from her point of view and that fresh eye coming in and sort of being, um, you know, I suppose being proud. So there's definitely that journey of uh, somebody who's Moroccan, who's lived that side and coming in and telling a story. So this would be the second part of her journey in Morocco. I mean, I, I guess I look at 
your work as well, you're such a strong portrait photographer yourself and you have a fascination with dress, with detail, with the ways that people present themselves. And we see something similar in some of her work as well. Is that to do with, is that to do with Morocco as a place, which is very visually rich, or is that just about the sensibility of you or her as an artist? I think definitely because, you know, um, Morocco is a very colorful uh, place. And I think also when you live outside your country, you're, you're sort of an outsider to a certain degree. You know, when you come back, you see, you know, you probably see things that most people, local people might just take it for granted. And I think it's that proudness you want to try to, you know, um, I suppose, show something from you that you feel proud of. Something that happens naturally, I think it's just something that, you know, you're coming back home mm -hmm. and it's something that you left behind that highlights itself. And because of what you're growing up with and, and the, the variation of, you know, you have to remember this, so many different types of music, food, people, dress codes. So you try, you know, you're sort of almost like you want to hug this. And this has come yeah. out in her work and it's come out in my work. You know, we have similar journey and a different kind of type of journey. Um, you know, her images for me, they're luscious, uh, they're beautiful, uh, you know, technically and stuff like that. But she also telling a story, but also it's her journey, you know, like when, when you look at her, this work, there's Layla's journey there as well. Well, I think I think one of the things, again, I'm, I was conscious of with her work and with your work as well, uh, the, the legacy of photography. Sorry. Uh, you just cut out there. Sorry, okay. say that again. I was just going to say that the, the legacy of photography in, in North Africa, for instance, yep. of, of the Western gaze, let's call it, on North Africa, on Arab countries, there's, a, there's such a long history. Of the Sorry, cutting out. Sorry. Okay. I was going to say, there's such a long history of Western imagery exoticizing uh, North African people and Arab. Okay, so. so is it not working? Can you can you hear me now? Sorry, Echo, you you kind of put a question. Apologize, I didn't I didn't hear the the question. Okay, let me let me try it. let me try it again. I was going to say, there's such a long history in Western. Yeah, no, can you, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. such a long history in Western image making of exoticizing uh, North Africans and Arab people and so on. <laughs> The kind of work that we've just seen, like the Moroccans, is is this an attempt to tell a different story, to go beyond some Western cliches of the exotic or the Oriental or something? Yes, um, I think okay, I, I can break it down. I suppose in a in, in, uh, way. So there's somebody like myself and somebody like Leila. You know, I was born here, grew up here, moved outside, coming back. So my story is what I'm doing, and Leila has her story. Uh, so there's definitely this thing of ownership, trying to uh, be, you know, the, the subject is Moroccan and the photographer is Moroccan. So you, I suppose that's the first thing is having the ownership of, uh, you know, of um, then somebody from outside coming, trying to see it in a different way. So this is me and Leila. But now, you know, the new photographers, I would say the last, last few years, it's incredible because these are local people that most of them haven't been outside. And they're telling an, an inside story, uh, more reportage. And now these young photographers really understand of what they have in front of them as Morocco that they didn't rec recognize before. It was only when the tourists come, they might see something funny and take a picture of it and stuff. And this is really exciting because now the, um, these young generation, they sort of documenting from their point of view that somebody hasn't been outside or been influenced from outside. So, again, there's this kind of journey between these photographers. And I would put myself as somebody who had an opportunity to, to look at Morocco from a different point of view. Uh, so that gives you a different eye, a different way of expressing. And I would say later we probably had the same. Um, so, yeah, so this is what I would probably say in that, mm. in that question. Um, when I look at, let's look at this image. The image that's on screen right now yeah. is part of... Uh, another series that's on show at something's her house called No Pasara, which is about uh, North African would-be immigrants, really. Um, people at the very edge of North Africa, in Morocco, in Algeria, trying to get across um, 
the Atlantic to Europe and either get in there and, and trying to get there or even coming back because they recognize, because they realize that things don't turn out like they necessarily want them to. And the whole series is, has this dreamlike quality to it about people stranded in this uh, space. I mean, which is epitomized by this image here, just this kid looking out into this kind of empty space. Were you, were you aware of that side of her work above and beyond the portraiture? Did yes, you... I mean, I, yes, sorry, go on. No, Karen, Karen. I, I was going to say, uh, you know, I had... And again, it was nice to see going from, you know, studio shoot to kind of almost reportage of, you know, mm. of exterior to see her eyes. And again, I would say, if you look, you know, if you look at Leila's journey as, as, a, as an artist, you know, this is where I could say she's growing, she's searching, uh, she's trying to find, um, you know, trying to tell a story of people. So I would say, you know, she's came, met her friends, artists like herself, documented them, and then her later looking at Morocco, the traditional way, done the studio shits we just talked about. And this is her, I suppose, looking at another side of the people from the land trying to get to the other side where she also lived. So this is why I think she's entered something new uh, in her way of work. And this is where I saw Layla found her niche in her work, telling mm. stories of people, this, this type of people, refugees and on and on women's stories. And this is why I say it was really sad what happened because I think this was the beginning, you know, like let's say the work she did was just the kind of warm up and this would be like really later going all the way because she was about getting involved with people, going going to those places, doing research, getting to know people. Um, so it's again, I would put it down. These this body of work and these images is really Layla's journey you know, as an artist. I mean, it's 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 so striking. Again, what does it? Uh, uh, actually, I should say before I forget that. Uh, that we are open to for any questions. If you want to send in a question uh, to myself, to Hassan, just to talk over, um, please feel free to do so. Um, uh, kind of going back to this image, I mean, look, if I didn't know, looking from the Moroccans to this series, they almost look like the work of a different photographer. Is that yeah. her evolving as a photographer or is that just her kind of shifting gears almost and saying, if I'm telling this story, I have to have a different approach to it. I, I think it's both. I think it's somebody searching, uh, somebody finding another way of expressing themselves uh, and telling and still tell a story. So I think that's why, that's why I said, you know, Layla was, you know, on the way to, I mean, she's a great artist, but I think she was on the way to really go all the way with her work and, and uh, telling stories, but also pushing herself as an artist, of, you know, the way she wants to express herself. So when you see this uh, image, it's beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And you wouldn't think it's the same photographer as you saw, you know, the, um, the ones we saw the studio shoots mm. or the photography about the, um, you know, the, the Moroccan artists. So this is evolution for her. This is something, it's almost like, as I say, she's, you know, she's sort of, sort of having that journey, I suppose, you know, people who have the dream to leave, you know, it's almost like coming, having these friends to shoot, these artists, and then her looking at Morocco from her point of view, that with the traditional style of clothing and the types of people. And this is maybe her thinking, why, you know, these people trying to get to Europe or the West, um, so it's almost her sort of coming back and leaving with these people. And I would love to see what would happen next as a body of work. Um, and it's nice to see her finding, you know, these beautiful meeting ways present. Where would you place her work? Like, who would you... Sorry? Who, who would you put her beside as a photographer? Who do you think she ranks beside? Uh, I, I mean, for me, she's... Um, I, I wouldn't even think, I haven't even thought of that. I could see it's Layla's journey. Uh, as a as a photographer, she's you know definitely uh, knew what she was doing. Um, uh, you know, as a uh, you know, do techniques and what she wanted to express. Um, 
And I've, for me, she's, you know, she's up there with anybody you can put next to her. You know, you can give any name, uh, she could she could be there with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, as I say, she's really telling the story of her, herself, her background and going forward from there. Yeah. What did you, I mean, obviously you talked about a few different things. I'm just interested, what kind of, conversation, what kind of conversations did you have with her are those conversations about making work? Are those conversations about some of the activist work she did and some of the charity work? Or are they conversations just about her and her personal place in the world? Well, this is, you know, I think, you know, this is the point where obviously what happened, she was just beginning of that. I think she was, this was, you know, as, as a friend and as, as a scene, as a journey as an artist, I think all the the work she did before was about her kind of finding them, finding herself within her own country and uh, moving. I think when she entered this body of work, then I think she's come out of herself, uh, you know, as a, uh, it's not about her, it was about other people. And this is why I think really I was, because for a while, I didn't know she was doing this, you know, uh, for a couple of years, because obviously she was gay and shooting and busy. And when I found out that, you know, when we met and she told me and I saw some images and stuff, then I realized, as I said earlier on in my conversation, she found exactly what she wants to do in her life with her, with her art as an artist. And that's why I say it was just the beginning, you know, it was, I think, uh, she was gonna go all the way on this, uh, on this situation. And that tells me it wasn't about her anymore. It was about, um, you know, highlighting the situation globally and, uh, you know, all the, the problems within this kind of situations of people, uh, refugees and, uh, you know, uh, women. So, so it's, again, it's really something that's, um, I suppose, her moving from being an artist and it's about Leila to become about the people. Um, do you think... I think what's interesting is that it feels like her. Um, it feels like the the work is being seen increasingly. Um, I think what's interesting is that she's left behind the work, and I've seen some of these projects, especially the Moroccans, in different exhibitions and different biennales over the last number of years is she do you think she's an artist who who will have a long uh history or long legacy will she be remembered for a, a a long period of time uh definitely i think you know she's got a great family you know uh, after the death i think the family really sort of got the work and protected it and then because you know you have to remember when she passed away it was big news uh, especially in Morocco it was you know a, a big news which really highlighted her work even more sadly um, and I think her family done a great job of getting all the work together working out you know because she would I mean that first six months a year Everybody was approaching the family. So they wanted to show the work here, there, and stuff like that. So they sort of got everything together. And now I think they have the work to keep her legacy going and put her in the right place. And they're actually doing a great job because, you know, it was a tough time. I mean, they had to, you know, deal with mourning, death, and then all these things were happening at the same time. Um, and, then, you know, some, sometimes, sadly enough, you know, when you have your, uh, an artist passes away at a young age and they have just a certain body of work, sometimes that becomes long term than somebody who's, you know, maybe stays, you know, uh, living for longer. So I think it's definitely, um, you know, she's a, a long time because all the work that's out there, that always would be that and no more. Um, so... So yeah, I think it's going to be a, a somebody like a, a long term. I mean, she, you know, she's established herself just before as an artist, what she's doing, and now of the interest, obviously, uh, you know, the 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 only body of work that's out there that would be sort of probably traveling around the globe and then you know uh, sort of quite quite regular. I mean, so 
we've only got a couple of minutes left. So if you do have a question, please let us know. Yeah. But other, otherwise, do you want to focus on these works that are in front of us just for a moment? Because these almost seem to me to be a combination of the two things that we've talked about, the Moroccans, these fantastic portraits, um, but also no Pissarro, which are this more dreamlike, evocative set. This is a series uh, that she shot in a refugee camp in Syria. They're, you know, straight up reportage. But again, she manages to just the quality of the portraiture, this, the, the man from the second right on the upper row, but also this woman, the woman, the, this woman in the, in the last image on the right hand at the top, that reminds me of, do you know, you know, you know that, yeah. that classic Dorothea Lang photo, I think mother and child or whatever it's called, the mother and baby, which is shot in yes. Depression Era America. It reminds me of that, the intensity of that gaze. There's a sort of classical quality to it as an image. And I think it's such, but at the same time, the circumstances that she's shooting in, a refugee camp, it's not a stable situation and so on, but she still manages to connect with these as people. And again, I mean, you talked about before, that's her character and so on, but it's also her eye as a photographer. You see that really clearly here, I think. Uh, definitely. I mean, this is, you know, if you look at, the work we just looked at, you know, from, you know, the Morocco to this, the black and white images was the same. You could see that she's an all-round photographer, um, you know, uh, and this is why I was saying, I think with uh, uh, doing this, these projects, it's given her also a different way of um, expressing the work, for, uh, you know, uh, her work. And um, at the same time, like we said, I think because of her character, she seemed to connect to people. And she's somebody who could be there, but also could be quiet, quiet and kind of just get on with it. Yeah. And she has this comfort situation with most people. This is how Layla was, you know? really. She had no barriers with anybody. And again, to see this body of work compared to Mar uh, Moroccan work, you could see her as a photographer. She's an all-round photographer. And like what you said, she has an eye. Uh, she has an eye of really... Um, catching that moment of what, whatever it is, it's a studio shoot or reportage. Yeah. Um, and I think this is why it's a, such a shame because it was, you know, we just looked at about four different types of style of works just now. So you could imagine if she continued, if she was uh, still yeah. around. I yeah. think she was, you know, it was, this, is, this is her searching as an artist and you could see, you know, as a journey, you know, when I, when I've been, since I've been speaking to you, you know, and I'm looking at the images, I see Layla's journey. That's all I can see uh, at the moment. You know, I don't see just being the photographer taking his pictures. I'm analyzing her as a person of, you know, coming to Morocco, doing that body of work, and, you know, the Moroccan subject, the, the beautiful refugee pictures, and then something like this, where it's like, mm. just every, everything's in your face um, mm. and trying to tell a story with the people um, and the environment. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so this is, um, you know, this is a great, you can see that a, a great artist, not just in the making, but a great artist that's searching and going forward. And this, you know, when you see this, you know, if you look at this body of work, you don't, you, you don't think about uh, Layla as the artist, you're looking at the people. If you yeah. look at the body of work in Marrakesh, you look at a, an artist doing that, that body of work. So you can start seeing the difference between this and that. So she's, that's Layla the artist, this is Layla telling the story, this body of work, because you can see, you know, her people gazing in the camera, how they, she's connected with them. So she's kind of stepped out in being Layla the artist and being storyteller. And this is the point where I was really amazed to see her getting to this point because, you know, I didn't know she was doing this at the beginning. And I saw an evolution and I could see also in her way and her body language and her comfort as a, uh, you know, because, I think every artist goes through a journey searching and if you can get to a point of, you know, uh, catching something and trying to tell a story or expressing it, whatever the way you think, you start to feel content with yourself. And for me, this body of work would probably, later, would be really important um, than some, maybe some of the beautiful pictures we've seen before, you know, the studio shifts and stuff. Because this is her now stepping aside as, as Layla and it's about, you know, uh, 
and not to be, become that artist, but to tell the story of the people. I think that's a fitting place uh, for us to close. Um, so just to say, Leila Alawi, Rite of Passage, opens uh, to the public at Somerset House this Sunday, uh, runs from the 11th of October to 28th Feb. Uh, it's free. Uh, you have to book in advance in these COVID times of ours uh, via the Somerset House website. Uh, thank you to Charles Russell, Russell Speechleys and to 154 Contemporary African Art Fair, uh, which is also taking place uh, online and at Somerset House uh, this weekend as well. Thank you more than anything else uh, to Hassan. And thank you, <laughs> Pleasure as always. And, uh, and thank you for, uh, for listening and watching and uh, talking with us thank about um, uh, Leila 